just a really short introduction into uh, friction and the force of friction. If you'd like some more information, uh, pages 168 and 169 in your book are, are, great, um, are a great resource. Um, basically, uh, friction is the thing that resists motion. Uh, anytime you're trying to move something, uh, you're normally fighting against friction. Uh, and it, it, um, the, the, the way the word is going to tend to deal with it is um, that friction tends to um, uh, be having between two surfaces. So if you see right here, we're trying to push a box. Um, and we're trying to push the box to the right. Uh, if we're pushing the box, trying to push the box to the right, there's going to be a force of friction that, that, that moves it, to, that, that, that pushes against us to the left. Um, and it's going to continue to oppose us to the left, and we can, we can push a little bit, and we'll push harder and harder and harder. And that f force of friction will keep on getting larger and larger and larger until eventually um, the box will start moving. Um, there, we normally separate the friction into two different types. We call it static friction. That's when we're trying to push something, but we can't move it. All right, so that's a, that's what's happening whenever we can't um, move the box. Um, and then there's kinetic friction, which happens when after you start moving the box, uh, it, there's still something that basically is slowing it down. So you imagine even even after I start, even if after I could push hard enough on the box to actually get this thing moving, it's still going to um, resist moving. It turns out that uh, the um, the 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 reason we get frictional forces is basically due to the roughness of materials, as you kind of see in this inset right here. Um, the roughness of materials basically keeps resists that motion basically because different parts of it are basically scraping against each other. That's why very smooth surfaces like uh, um, you know a, a waxed bowling lane or ice or glass uh, tend to um, tend to tend to slide very well, whereas very rough things like concrete um, and and rubber. Uh, tend, tend to resist um, types of motion. Um, and that, that's true uh, kind of regardless of whether you're moving or staying still. Um, the roughness of this material and kind of how resistant it is to uh, movement is, um, is, gonna, is captured in something called the coefficient of friction. Um, it commonly, uh, commonly you, we use the, uh, the, 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 um, the symbol mu. All right. Um, we commonly use the symbol mu in that case. Let's try that one more time. Um, and so, and, and there are two different types of mu. There's the mu s for the static and mu k uh, for kinetic. And it turns out that um, things are always less stickier. They're, they're, they're less resistant to motion um, when they're moving than when they're stationary. So mu k um, is, always, is always less than mu s. Um, so that's part of what uh, determines um, the force of friction. Uh, the other thing that determines the force of friction is basically it, it has to do with how tightly those two things are being pushed together. And whenever we have something, let's say, resting on a surface, um, how tightly they're pushed together just depends on basically the, gra the force of gravity and the, force, the, the normal force, basically how hard the normal force is pushing those two things together. Um, and you can see that in this, this image because why that might happen. So we have a surf, two surfaces, they have a set amount of roughness, and then how hard we're pushing them together basically makes them uh, strong, uh, more rough or less, uh, or more resistant or less resistant to lateral movement. Um, and this is why, uh, for instance, a heavy couch is harder to slide across the room uh, than a light couch, for instance. Um, even even to get it moving is much harder. Uh, that's because basically that extra normal force basically creates a higher force of friction. Um, so let's look at the uh, the actual equations that we get. Um, so again, there are two different things. The static is is basically when um, we're trying to move something. So again, let's say we have a box um, and we're trying to move it. Um, what what we what we can do is we can first apply a little force. And then the force of friction is going to directly oppose that. The static force of friction is going to oppose that. Um, and then we can keep pushing harder and harder and harder. Okay, so this is this is how hard I'm pushing. We can keep pushing harder and harder and harder, and eventually we reach a point where the static force of friction (FS) here. Um, uh, it can't get any bigger. So the biggest that the static force of friction can ever get is mu s, which again is just is just a coefficient of friction that has to do with the material, and then the normal force, which just has to do with again the, the how how strong the normal force this the, the in this case the ground is pushing against the box. Once that once once we're pushing harder than that um, than that that force of friction that's force of static friction, 
the box will start moving. And once it starts moving, then we're going to be dealing with kinetic friction. Um, basically, it's the same type of uh, force. Um, it's, it's related to this coefficient of friction and the normal force. But in this case, this coefficient of, of kinetic friction is different than the static friction one. And so uh, basically, it provides a lower force of friction when we're actually moving. This is why it's actually easier to keep things moving once you start them moving than, than when you stop. So if you ever start pushing something, it's hard to get it going. But once you start it going, it's much easier to keep it going. That's because, um, because basically this mu k is less than this mu s. Uh, that's all I've got for you for right now. Um, I hope that's useful. Uh, go ahead again if you need some clarity. Look in the book. Look at the examples I'm going to do. Uh, but hopefully I give you a quick introduction to how friction works.